Hey guys, a very good day to you all. In this video, we will understand what are pseudo first order reactions. And let me tell you one thing guys, that I have already uploaded all the videos related to your chapter chemical kinetics. And the link of the playlist is given in the description box below or you can simply click on this i button which is present on the right top corner of your screen. Now to understand the pseudo first order reactions, let us consider a simple reaction over here. And in this reaction, as you can see, A reacts with B to give us products. Now, how to find out the rate of the reaction? So, with the help of the rate law, we get to know that the rate of the reaction is K into molar concentration of A raised to the power 1 into molar concentration of B raised to the power 1. Now, guys, here, this K is nothing but the rate constant. And this powers 1 and 1 can only be found out experimentally. Now, since this is an example, therefore, we assume that with the help of the experiment, we got to know that these powers are 1 and 1. Now, what is the order of the reaction? So, order is nothing but just you have to add the powers. So, order is equal to 1 plus 1, which gives us 2. So, guys, can I say that this reaction is a second order reaction? But guys, what we observe is that this reaction follows first order kinetics, which means that this reaction behaves like a first order reaction. And guys, these types of reaction are called as pseudo first order reaction. So any reaction which has order greater than one, but behaves like the first order reaction are called as pseudo first order reactions. Let me explain one second. Any reaction which has order greater than 1 but behaves like the first order reaction are called as pseudo first order reactions. Now you might be wondering that why does it happen so? Now to understand that, first of all you must know what is molar concentration. Now. Molar concentration is also known as molarity. Okay. Now, the value of molarity or the molar concentration tells us how many number of moles are present in 1 liter solution. Okay. So, the molar concentration value is going to tell us how many number of moles are present in 1 liter solution. And to find out the value of molar concentration, the formula is simple. It is nothing but total number of moles divided by volume of the solution. So, if your volume of the solution is 5 liters, then you need to consider all the number of moles present in 5 liter solution. If your volume of the solution is 4 liter, then you need to consider all the number of moles present in 4 liter of solution. Now, I hope guys that you are clear with what is molar concentration and its formula as well. Now, let us come back to our equation again. So, in this equation, we assume that in before the start of the reaction, in 5 liters of solution, there are 5 moles of A and 500 moles of B. So, before the start of the reaction, in a 5 liter solution, we have 5 moles of A and 500 moles of B. And as you can see over here, B is present in excess huge amount of B is present over here as compared to A. Now, we need to find out the molar concentration. So, let me take you all to the formula again. What is molar concentration? Total number of moles divided by volume of the solution. Okay. Now, we are, if you want to find out the molar concentration of A, then the total number of moles of A is nothing but 5 and the volume of the solution is 5. So, 5 divided by 5 will give you 1 molar. Therefore, the molar concentration of A is 1 molar and the molar concentration of B is nothing but number of moles, that is nothing but 500. So, 500 divided by the volume of the solution, that is nothing but 5 liters. So, 500 divided by 5 will give you 100 molar. Okay, now we start the reaction. Now, after we start the reaction, what we observe is that after 3 seconds, 0.5 moles of A gets consumed. Now, if 0.5 moles of A gets consumed, then how many moles of B will get consumed? 
So in the reaction, you can see that for one mole of A, we require one mole of B. So obviously, if 0.5 moles of A gets consumed, then 0.5 moles of B will also get consumed. Now guys, can I say that in the 5 liter solution, we now have 4.5 moles of A and we have 499.5 moles of B. Why? Because 5 moles minus 0.5 will give you 4.5 and 500 minus 0.5 will give you 499.5. Now you find out the molar concentration. Now after now you found out that the molar concentration of A is 0.9 molar and the molar concentration of B is 99.9 .9 molar. And how I hope you all now know how to find out the molar concentration. Over here it is nothing but 4.5 divided by 5 and 499.5 divided by 500. Okay, so you get 99.9 .9 over here and 0.9 over here. Now I want you all to observe these two box. Now in this as you can see, the molar concentration of A has changed from 1 molar to 0.9 molar. Which means that guys can I say it has decreased by 0.1 molar. Am I right? And here the molar concentration of B has changed from 100 molar to 99.9 .9 molar. So guys can I say here also it has decreased from 0.1 molar. But guys the change in molar concentration of B is negligible. Why it is negligible? Because if you reduce 0.1 molar from 100 molar it is not going to change much but if you remove 0.1 molar from 1 molar then the change is significant for example if you remove a bucket of water from C then the volume of water in C is not going to get affected but if you remove a bucket of water from your water tank which is present at home then the volume of water is going to get affected. Similarly here also B is acting as your C. The number of moles of B, B are present as large as C and here this A is acting as your water tank which is present in your home. So as you can see the number of moles of A are less but the number of moles of B is huge. Therefore, the change in concentration is not going to affect much. It is just changing from 100 to 99.9. .9. See, from this C, you have removed one bucket. But from this water, water tank which is present at your home, when you remove one bucket, this is going to affect much. Okay. So, you can, I, I hope you are understanding. Over here, you have just removed 10% out of 1 molar. Then you get 0.1 molar. But over here, I think you just remove 1.1% and then you get 99.9 .9 molar. So, the change is massive over here. Massive over here. I am so, am I bad guys? The change is massive over here and it is negligible when it comes to molar concentration of B. I hope it is clear. Now, so guys, can I say that the molar concentration of B remains constant? Why it remains constant? Because the change in molar concentration is negligible. Okay. And therefore, now we need to make some modifications into the formula for rate. So the formula for rate now becomes K into molar concentration of A raised to 1 into molar concentration of B raised to 1. This is the formula that we have. But since this molar concentration of B remains constant. Therefore, we replace this molar concentration by B of B by a another constant. Okay, so we just replace it with a constant and constant k dash. Okay, so we have replaced it with a constant k dash, and this k dash raised to one is nothing but k dash itself. Okay, so I've just rearranged it over here. Now, this is the rate constant, and this is the constant molar concentration that we have got. So when you multiply both the constants you are obviously going to get a constant value. Okay. Therefore, we replace it with another constant. Let's say capital K. Okay. And this is the new formula for rate that we get. 
and now if you look for the order of the reaction here the order of the reaction is one only okay therefore this reaction behaves like the first order reaction and hence it is called as the pseudo first order reaction now for example you can consider another equation over here in the hydrolysis of methyl acetate h2o is present in excess like h2o is acting as a c over here and this methyl acetate is acting as a water tank now therefore the rate is going only uh, when you calculate the rate you are go only going to consider the molar concentration of ch3 c double o ch3 which is nothing but methyl acetate and hence this is also a pseudo first order reaction so guys i hope that you have liked this video and if you like this video then please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do check out my channel where i uploaded physics and chemistry videos they might be helpful for you all and guys thank you for watching this video